Welcome to our lecture online. If you look at the board, you will see the same polynomial three times, which means we're going to try to factor this in three different ways. You will pick the method you like the best. None of those are either better or worse. It's simply sometimes your personal preference. So let's go ahead and try our first way. When we see something like this, first of all, we have a number in front of the square term, 3t squared, which makes things a little bit more difficult. And notice we cannot factor out a common factor. We're stuck with what we have. So let's try this. We know that this is going to be written as the product of two binomials. First of all, we take a look at the first term, 3t squared. The only way in which we can take two, term, two factors and multiply them together and get 3t squared is by taking 3t and t. 3t times t gives us 3t squared. Next, we need to take a look at the signs. We have a negative there and a positive there. The only way to get a middle term that's negative and the last term that's positive is that the last two terms in our binomials are both negative. You can see that if we have two negative numbers multiplied together, we get a positive number, and added together, we get a negative number. So we, now we know that that must be the signs. Now, to get the last two numbers, we know that when we multiply them together, we get 15. In other words, 3 times 5, or 1 times 15. Now, the question is, do we put the 3 and the 5 here, or do we put the 5 here and the 3 there? Or a 1 and a 15, or a 15 and a 1? There's four different combinations. Well, first of all, it's not going to be 1 and 15, because if we put down a 15 here, 15 times t already gives us 15t, and then 1 times a 3 gives us another 3, that's minus 17, or minus 18, and so that's definitely too big. So we know it's not possible that this is the combination. So the only thing left is that we put a 3 there and a 5 there, or a 5 here and a 3 there. Now notice, if we put the 5 over here, 5 times a 3 gives us a negative 15, or negative 5 times 3 gives a negative 15. That's already too big, so it cannot be this combination that leaves us only with this combination, 5 and 3. And then let's go ahead and work it out to make sure we get the original polynomial back. So it's always a good check to see if you did it correctly. So let's multiply this together. So 3 times t gives us 3t squared. 3t times a negative 3 is a negative 9t. Negative 5 times t is a negative 5t. A negative 5 times a negative 3 is a plus 15. Notice we get the first and the last terms like we suggested. And then notice that if we add these two together, minus 9t minus 15t gives us back the minus 14t. So we know that we did it correctly over here. So that's kind of a little bit by guesswork and a little bit of intuition. You can go ahead and factor it that way. Or you can follow, use the following technique. You can multiply the first and the last term together and see, okay, the product is equal to 3 times 15, which is 45. And then the sum is going to be minus 14. What do we do with this? Well, we're going to rewrite this as a polynomial of four terms. In other words, we're going to split the middle term into two middle terms, and the two numbers we're going to use are going to be found by using that hint right there. So this becomes 3t squared minus something t minus something t plus 15. And the two numbers that go in here will be determined by this right here. So we know that the product is going to be 45 and the sum minus 14. Well, how do we get 45? Well, 3 times 15, but that doesn't add up to minus 14. How about 9 and 5? Yes, if we multiply a minus 9 times a minus 5 together, that adds up to minus 14, and multiplied adds up to a positive 45. So we're going to rewrite this as a minus 9t and a minus 5t. Once we've done that, we're now going to go ahead and group them in groups of two. Here we can factor out a 3t, so when we factor out a 3t, we're left with a t minus 3. And here we can factor out a minus 5, and when we do that, we get a t minus 3. And then notice in the two terms we have here, they both contain a t minus 3, which can then be factored out as well. 
We probably want to put some equal signs, so this is equal to factor out of t minus 3, and we're left with a 3t minus 5. And notice we get the exact same result as what we had over here. We have it in a different order, but of course that doesn't matter. And finally, we can try it again, but in this case we're going to use the FOIL method. So when we use the FOIL method, we look at the first coefficient here, and we know that we can get 3 by multiplying 1 times 3, or 3 times 1. Notice that because of the signs we need negative numbers here, and to get 15 that can be obtained by negative 3 times the negative 5, or negative 1 times the negative 15. The reason why we don't need to put the other two combinations down, let me go ahead and put a line there so we can separate it, is because we already put down all the possible combinations on the left side. So now what we're going to do is try this. And of course the arrows go this way. So 1 times a negative 5 is a negative 5, and a 3 times a negative 3 is a minus 9. When we add these together, minus 5 minus 9 is equal to minus 14, which gives us the middle term. Wow, first time out, we got the right combinations. We need this number, these numbers, and these numbers, and we're in business, which means that 1 times x minus 3 is 1 binomial, so uh, x minus 3, and we'll multiply the times 3x minus 5. And so this is the factored form of our original problem. Now, of course, I used x's instead of t's. Hmm, I should, have, I should have written t's instead, not x's. So let me go ahead and change that, because in this example, we use t's and not x's. But notice that using the full method went pretty quickly. We put all the combinations down to get the number 3, 1 times 3, or 3 times 1. We put all the combinations down to get minus 15. Minus 3 times minus 15 is a plus 15, uh, minus 5 is a plus 15, minus 1, minus 15. We don't have to put the other combinations down because we already have all the possible combinations here. And then we notice that 1 times a negative 5 plus 3 times a negative 3 adds a negative 14, which is the middle term. We got the right combination. And then we write 1 times t minus 3 for the first binomial and 3 times t minus 5 for the second binomial. And that's the factor form. And that is how it's done in any of the three methods. And you determine which method you prefer. That's how we do it.